November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. In this part of the Instrument Mastery series, I'm going to cover the gyroscopic flight instruments, and this video will cover the attitude indicator. Pilots need to have good attitudes. This video is about the orientation in space, though, that kind of attitude. The attitude indicator quickly tells you your airplane's attitude, and the airplane's attitude can quickly affect the pilots. So we'll cover how it works and how to use it skillfully. Anything that spins has a gyroscopic tendencies. To maximize a useful gyroscopic effect, you need a heavy or dense wheel spinning very fast. Once it's spinning, it doesn't want to change what it's doing. It's got inertia, just like any object. If you mount a gyro inside of a gimbal, you can then move the base around without the gyroscope moving because it's essentially rigid in space. Rigidity in space is why gyroscopes are useful. You can also stick a coffee cup in a gimbal to keep your coffee from spilling. If you stick an artificial horizon card on the, the gyroscope, then you can get an idea of which way your aircraft is pointing because the plane rotates around the gyroscope and it's shown on the instrument face. There are two ways that you can power a gyroscope, with air or with an electric motor. Typically, the attitude indicator is powered by air. So we've got an engine-driven vacuum pump here with this spline shaft that connects to the back of the engine. Here on this diagram, you can see that the engine-driven vacuum pump sucks in air, first through the air filter, and then it goes to your vacuum-driven instruments, your attitude indicator, and your heading indicator, and then it converges back uh, to the vacuum pump, and then the air gets dumped overboard and the air inlet is positioned near the rim of the gyroscope. It's got little teeth in it so that it gets it something to grip onto and it spins really, really fast. An electric motor can do the same thing, but for redundancy, the attitude indicator is typically powered by the air, whereas the turn coordinator is powered by electricity. And I'm gonna cover that in its own video here, I think uh, next actually. There are also solid state gyros nowadays and they don't have any moving parts. They use computer chips to define gravity, and that's how they define down. Of course, once it knows which way is down, then it can use its accelerometers uh, to tell you the pitch and roll axes and display an attitude. This video, though, is going to cover the mechanical types, but I wanted to go ahead and mention the electronic ones because they're starting to pop up a lot more frequently. So, you started your engine, and the vacuum pump is sucking air, and the gyro comes to life. It should erect itself within just a few seconds, and it'll show a level attitude. If it doesn't, consider it broken. But once you've checked its attitude, it's a good idea to check your attitude again to make sure that you're safe to fly. You'll also need to check your vacuum gauge to make sure that it's pulling the correct amount. Five inches is typically what I see on the planes I fly, and if the vacuum pump isn't pulling hard enough, then you might not have enough air velocity to spin that gyro fast enough to keep it stable, and so it won't give you a reliable reading. But now that you know how a gyro works and how it's useful, Let's talk about a few peculiarities that'll come up on a test and in real life. Precession is the big thing about gyroscopes. It's what causes them to behave seemingly funny uh, and they don't behave like you would expect them to. And I'm going to illustrate this precession with a simple case that everyone over age five is familiar with, riding a bike. Think about when you're going fast on a bike, right? It's stable and wants to keep going in a straight line, doesn't it? Well, that's because you've got two gyroscopes down beneath you and they want to keep doing what they're doing. But now, when you want to turn right, what do you do? You lean right, don't you? You don't actually turn the handlebars. But the bike turns anyway, doesn't it? That's because gyroscopes act as if the force was applied 90 degrees ahead in the direction of rotation. So, you lean to the right, which applied a force to the top of the wheel, but then the wheel turned as if the force was at the front of the wheel, wasn't it? In the direction of rotation, 90 degrees ahead. And this t causes the bike to turn automatically without actually turning the handles. Now, of course, at low speeds, you still have to turn the handlebars because there isn't enough gyroscopic defect to make it work. But I'm not gonna talk about riding bikes anymore. If you're watching this video, you probably know how to do it. Precession from friction in the mounts is kind of what causes the gyros to drift and they need periodic checking. Attitude indicators, though, have a self-riding mechanism that helps prevent this. But you should definitely notice if your attitude indicator isn't working properly by cross-checking it with the indications of the other instruments 
and by simply looking out the window. Precession is much more of an issue with the directional gyro or heading indicator, and I'm going to cover that in another video, I think two from now. You just have to know that precession is what causes gyros to drift, and so now that when you look at the face of the instrument, you kind of need, also need to know how to read it. So we're going to go over that, because you're going to need it for a test. Here's what straight and level looks like. If you're banked one way or the other, the little artificial horizon will show a bank. If you're pitched up or down, it'll show that too. So here's a climbing left turn. Here is a level right turn. And here is a straight descent. Pretty simple, right? These horizontal marks here tell you how many degrees that you're pitched. The big marks are 10 degrees and the little ones are 5. Pitching over 30 degrees technically classifies as aerobatics and you should be wearing a parachute. Your instrument probably actually doesn't have markings beyond that anyway. There are little tick marks around the top too, and these indicate your bank angle. They're typically in 10 degree marks, with special markings at 30, 45, and 60. Banking more than 60 classifies as aerobatics, and you better be wearing your parachute. There are usually also bank lines in the face of the artificial horizon that will align with the little plane's wings, and you can use those to judge your bank angle as well. So that's how you read this thing. But whoop de doo what does it all mean, Basel? It helps you know which way your plane is pointing. First off, you'll use it during unusual attitude recoveries if it's not one of the ones that your instructor covered up. It also helps you maintain situal awareness and maintain constant climbs during turns and descents. It acts as a nice cross-check for the other instruments during your scan, and it forms the center of that instrument scan. Much like you'd use the VSI to tell you when to start leveling off, you'd use the attitude indicator when to tell you when to stop turning. Banking the aircraft is what actually turns it. Turns aren't made with the rudder like they are in a boat. I know, that blew my mind too when I learned that. If you're banked 20 degrees, then you'll start to level out at half your bank angle or in this case, which is 10 degrees. So, if you're making a left turn to 270 and you're banked 20, you'll start to level when your wings, uh, when your heading says 280, right? Which is half of 20, so you're gonna go 10 degrees before your target uh, heading. You'll use its bank indications during ground reference maneuvers, and you'll use it to make adjustments to your bank angles during turns. This instrument will take on a whole new importance during your instrument training, and it's required for instrument flight. If you're just flying VFR, you really don't need one, but having one failing on you during an IFR constitutes an emergency that you need to notify ATC about. Well, you know, I think that just about does it for this instrument. Um, we've got more gyroscopic ones to come, and so, but now that you know what you need on this instrument for your FAA test and in real life, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free, unlike a traditional magazine subscription. And stay with me on 121.mic.